Hello everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, I would like to prune some figs for you guys and teach you guys how to do this. Uh, particularly your potted fig trees and also your fig trees that are in warmer places uh, that you have maybe in California or Arizona, south of Texas. You know, anywhere that's a zone eight or higher, you can achieve this and this is the same principles that I would give you guys for your tree. Um, I think there's so many different ways to prune figs and it depends on where you guys live and your situation and your objectives. Your objectives are so important. Knowing what you want out of your tree, again, based off of how old it is, uh, based off of what you want out of the tree next year, do you want a lot of fruit? Do you want a lot of growth? You know, that, that really is all up to you and your objectives. So knowing all that, that's really a precursor to doing any pruning at all on any tree. Now I have done other videos guys on pruning our in-ground figs. Um, we've talked about chopping them all the way down to six to 12 inches and covering them. We've talked about um, pruning a fig that you're gonna cover, you're gonna wrap it. This is the video for you guys that are having an in-ground tree that's a tree form and you don't have to cover it. You have very little danger of frost. We are producing main crop not the San Pedro crop. So the second crop, this is the crop that forms on the new growth of the year. And uh, again, there's so many different ways to be pruning these things that I, I really do believe that if I don't make this a longer form video, you're not gonna really fully understand the subject. I could just say, well, cut off this branch and cut off that branch and then you're done. Uh, but I really want you guys to understand the why and the how. And uh, I think that makes us better growers. So let's kind of get started with this tree. This is an old tree. This is a tree that is five or six years old. It's called Italian 258. Um, I have a number of these trees that are about five or six years old now. And this is really the finished form of what you're looking for. I think you can achieve this form by about year four if you do everything right from the beginning. This is the final form in which you're gonna get the most production out of your tree in a container or in a very warm place growing a fig tree in the grounds, um, you wanna grow them as a single stemmed tree. You don't wanna grow them as a bush. If you live in a cold place, you have no other choice but to grow your figs as a bush. But if they're in pots, you can take them out of the cold and the cold won't kill the branches. So I think it's really um, ideal and optimal for production, for also the visual appeal of your tree to be pruning it as a, as a single stem tree, not as a bush. Again, this is all up to your personal preference, but that's, that is a big hard and fast rule that I live by when it comes to these, these trees. We only have so much soil, we only have so much nutrients, and if we are limiting the number of nutrients that goes into one single trunk, um, or if we're limiting that nutrients to a number of different trunks, instead of putting all that nutrients into one trunk, I find that these trees are a lot more productive, especially in containers when they're as a single stem tree. So what I always do, and you're gonna see this across the board with all of my trees, we get them to a certain height, one stem from the base, and then we prune off the top. And by pruning off the top and pruning off any of these tips, they're called apical buds, these growth tips, that's where the growth comes out of every year, those are the growth points. Um, if you look very closely at your tree, you'll see them. If we take that tip off, we then encourage the tree, like any tree, to start branching out. We've removed that apical dominance. It's a hormone in the tree called auxin. We remove that auxin. Figs have a, a very unusual set of auxin. They don't have that much dominance. Um, so there's many different points on the tree that can show lots of dominance. And they end up forming a rounded crown in really the shape of a crown, a very thick and dense canopy. Whereas like a pine tree, as an example, will be grown as a central leader. We grow one single stem up in the air and off of that one single stem, you get all these branches that form that classic Christmas tree shape. That's never gonna happen with your figs. It could, but in the end, it's really gonna be very difficult to achieve that. Uh, so this is a tree that doesn't have much apical dominance and wants to branch out and wants to have this rounded goblet shape to it. And um, that's what we're going for. So 
you'll see that with every one of these trees. And I want to show you guys now, this is an old tree. This is five or six years old, like I said. I want to show you guys some young trees. I want to show you guys some maybe two to three year old trees. And then I want to take you guys around and prune the final form uh, of a tree that is five or six years old, just like this. I've already pruned this tree. Um, so I can't show you guys how to prune this, but I will show you guys an older tree at the end of this video. Um, it's just some main takeaways is that we have a single stem tree that branches out into many different directions and forms these scaffolds here. And each of these scaffolds, we have one, two, three, four, we have four scaffolds, becomes our then fruiting branches for the year. Next year, these branches will then leaf out and will form our main crop on those new branches. So when I'm pruning these trees, I'm imagining where is that new growth going to come out? Where is it going to form? And what direction is it going to grow in? Because I don't want to have branches shading each other out. I want to have as much sunlight actually into the canopy as possible, but I don't want to have too much sunlight into the canopy because that can also adversely affect the tree. So we want to have the right density of leaves. And I want to make sure that we are getting these things spaced out. We're getting this permanent structure set up. We have that single stem trunk. We cut it off at a certain height. We get this thing to form its scaffolds. Those scaffolds could fruit that year. We'll talk about that in our two to three year old trees. And then from those scaffolds, we form our permanent fruiting branches. And every year we then can either prune out some of those branches or keep some, recycle that wood, recycle that process so that we can always have new growth, new healthy growth to then form our new fruits on. So that's a little rundown. Let me show you guys now behind you are some young trees. And we have a pretty good variation here of trees that were just freshly rooted as cuttings. And uh, we have some that were air layers. You can see they all have different shapes and different sizes. This is a stronger tree here. This is more along the lines of something you'd see as a two-year-old tree. Same thing over here, more, more of a two-year-old tree with larger, uh, larger branches. But most of the time you're gonna have these really young one-year-old trees that look about like this. And what I would suggest to you guys is that a lot of time our one-year-old little trees don't really do all that well. And there's a form of pruning, it's called rejuvenation pruning. And figs have a, a disease, by the way, it's called fig mosaic virus. And this can really affect the, the health of the tree. And what a lot of people do is with their older trees that are 20, 30 years old, sometimes they lose some vigor. Sometimes they get a bit prone to the fig mosaic virus. Um, sometimes they just need a little bit of assistance. So what some people do, and I've done this with my older potted trees, you can do this in a pot, you can do this in the ground, you can do this anywhere. Figs are very resilient. You can come in here to your young one-year-old cuttings and cut this pretty much the whole branch off and cut this all the way down to the base. And what this will essentially do is mimic a form of rejuvenation pruning. And now we can have a branch that comes up from the base. You can see this is all we left. In fact, I may even cut this whole thing off and just leave this little piece here. We're now gonna get growth that comes from this particular portion here that's a lot healthier. We may even get some growth that comes from the roots or below the soil. And we're gonna select next year the healthiest branch that we can get from this particular tree. That will then be the main trunk. We wanna start off on the right foot here. And some of you guys may think, wow, that was pretty drastic. But these figs grow so quickly that we wanna have the right start at the end or we want to have the right start now so that we can have a very productive tree in the future. And that's kind of what you see here is that we have a pretty good node spacing here. We have healthy looking branches. I mean, this is a pretty good looking tree. You can see down towards the bottom, we have very dense and close node spacing down here. See all these different rings. That's a node, that's a node, that's a node. So for every node, as you can see, as we go up further up the tree, 
these dense spacings here get a bit bigger. And that's kind of what we want all the time. We want to have a pretty wide node spacing at the start. I think that really gets our trees to a healthier um, starting point. And this just sets the tree up for really good success in the future. You can see another tree over here. This is exactly what we did to this particular tree is we rejuvenate prune it. We rejuvenation pruned this tree. This is one of my very favorite trees. It's called Azores Dark. And we cut this thing all the way back to here. You can see that cut right there. It put out a new branch, which was extremely healthy. And now look how much this thing grew in one year. And now we have a really nice base for this tree. So that's my personal recommendation. You don't have to do this. You could have very easily, we could have came over here. We could have left this branch on here and everything would have been fine. But I have found through my many years now of growing figs, having so many different trees, so many different varieties that that personally, that rejuvenation technique is going to become a standard practice with all of my very young trees. So I'm going to come in here with all of these guys and we're going to cut them all back to a very low point. We're going to leave some buds so that we can get some buds, some activity down here. Sometimes your tree might be a little too young. You know, this tree over here looks like it was very freshly rooted. We have some frost damage up here. As you can kind of see, I'll zoom in for you guys. This is just what we do here is we let our trees survive the elements and you can see that green growth. This is unlignified growth that came on too late in the season. It didn't have time to brown up, to harden up. And that frost comes in, puts our trees in dormancy and this tree just wasn't ready. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna come in and I'm actually gonna cut out all this frost damage because this is dead anyway. This will not do that well next year. So I'm gonna come in here and cut that out. This bud right here may be all right. We can probably salvage that and this tree will do well next year. But because this tree here, as an example, was probably quite fresh in, in terms of its rooting process, I probably won't cut this all the way down to the base. You have to evaluate this. You have to say, all right, well, if there's a node down here, we'll be fine. You know, um, if there's no node down below, you don't want to be cutting your tree all the way down to the base. However, I find this to be such a beneficial practice and it's such a crazy thing for somebody to say to cut your tree all the way down to the base. Uh, there's so many people, so many Americans specifically, uh, you know, I'm an American too. We want bigger, we want better, we want larger trees, we want faster growing trees. That's not really what we want with these figs with fruit trees in general. We don't need to be doing this so quickly. We need to be so we need to be more patient. Set up your tree from the right start from the beginning, you're going to be a lot happier. All right, so now we have we're moving on now to a 2-year-old tree. And I want to show you guys how to prune this guy. This is a tree we did exactly what I mentioned. We rejuvenate pruned this tree. We cut it down to here. It put out a new branch. And now actually it looks like it's in a really good shape. It has a great form to it. We have uh, two branches coming out from the base. It's a single stem tree though, because this is technically, this portion here is one stem. Um, ideally though, in most situations, I like to have that start maybe about 12 to 18 inches high and then let it branch out. But that's not big, that's not a huge deal. It doesn't really matter where this whole thing starts out. I'll show you guys a a six-year-old tree I have that starts out pretty low here with the with the permanent scaffolds but this is now going to be a permanent scaffold this is now a permanent scaffold so from here we now have formed new fruiting branches and we'll get branches that will branch out from these locations and will fruit for us um, the following year which is really good that's what we want we have the right form already we've actually skipped a whole year because normally what we do is by the second year, we have this long, nice stem. And I'll show you guys a better example here of what I mean by that is that here's a two year old tree. We grafted this onto this. We put out really nice growth and we pruned off this tree at a certain height. And now the following year, again, at about 18 inches high, this is now going to branch out. We removed the tip. 
we remove these growth tips, any of these growth tips, we remove that apical dominance. They start putting out um, branches in all different directions. By removing that hormone, that auxin, if I can zoom in here for you guys, if I can focus this up, see that growth tip right there on the far left, on the highest point in the tree? We cut that out, we're gonna get ourselves removing that auxin, removing that hormone, and we're gonna have this thing branch out quite nicely. So that's what we did over here, is that we came in, I'm gonna zoom out for you guys real quick. We came in here, we got it to a certain height, we chopped off the top. Now this will finally branch out and will form what I was showing you guys over here with this tree in particular, is that now we have these scaffolds. We have these permanent scaffolds here. And from here we can then make cuts because I'm gonna keep this permanently, I'm gonna keep this permanently. I may want this to turn into a scaffold at some point. Maybe this can turn into a scaffold at some point. So I'm not gonna mess with that too much. In fact, in general, I don't wanna be pruning these trees too much at, at all. And the reason for that is because if I'm focusing on production, which at this point you finally can, right? You got yourself some scaffolds. We've got ourselves some fruiting branches, some nice form to this. This is a tree where we can say, all right, well, I want some fruit next year. I want a lot of fruit. And if we want a lot of fruit, we don't want to be pruning much at all. This whole rejuvenation pruning where I cut this thing all the way down to the base here, all this is going to do is, an, is it, uh, activate the tree into growing very quickly and a very healthy form of growth. That's the real key there is a, a very healthy growth. Um, so we're not going to get a whole lot of fruit off of that tree. It's a young tree. We're not expecting fruit anyway. We're patient, right? We have all different sizes and different ages of trees. If that tree doesn't fruit for me, it's not the end of the world. I want this tree to be set off on the right foot. So now this guy over here is in that fruiting form. And I can say, all right, well, I want this tree to fruit. And if you kind of look at this tree, it actually really has the perfect form as is. It doesn't really need much pruning. I'll take off that bud there, and I'll take off this bud right here, this little guy. And you could say, all right, well, I can bring the height down a little bit, but the more I prune, the less fruit I get. So I'm actually not even really gonna touch this tree. Um, we can come over here. We can look at this tree. We have our main trunk. We have our two scaffolds. We'll take this growth out. We almost lost the pruning shears, guys. We'll take this, this little node out there. Uh, we can leave this node and maybe we can form a, a third scaffold off of that node. But what I really wanna do is actually bring this height back a little bit because these are now the permanent branches. These are the permanent scaffolds. Main trunk branching off into two scaffolds into that V shape. We're gonna bring this back. And the following year, it's actually crazy because the first tree I showed you is so far ahead of this particular tree. It's a whole year ahead of the game of what I was showing you before. It's actually the same variety as well. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have this permanent structure here. So I'm gonna bring this back and I'm gonna take that out. We're gonna have a growth that comes out this way we have a growth behind it that will come out this way. We're going to form all of our fruiting branches this way. But we're going to have a lower production, unfortunately. Um, we're going to make one more cut over here. And now we have basically a main trunk and two, two scaffolds. We form our, our branches here, our fruiting branches from there. We have the perfect form. We're on the perfect start. Everything's going, going well. We may not get too much fruit off of this because of how hard we pruned it. A hard pruning is defined by taking off eight or more inches of growth. Um, what we really want to take off is no more than three to four inches if we're really expecting and want lots of fruit. So I'm going to show you guys now a tree that's in its almost finished state. You can see down there at the bottom, we have a main trunk, comes out to about 18 inches and then branches out and has those scaffolds, those permanent scaffolds 
On those permanent scaffolds are all kinds of fruiting branches from where we can induce more fruiting branches. You want about one fruiting branch per gallon of soil and you can kind of do this calculation as well in your head for your in-ground tree. You can kind of get a good rough estimation if you spend enough time, you study your trees, you can kind of get an idea of how strong this is and how much fruit this tree can handle. If we have too many fruiting branches, our tree is going to be stressed. It's going to be too, um, have too much fruit load to it. And we're not going to have nearly as much fruit that way. You know, potentially it'll even ripen a lot later. So we want to, if anything, lighten the fruit load, but we want to find that right balance. And I definitely live by that rule is that one fruiting branch per gallon of soil. This is about a seven to 10 gallon size pot. So ideally we should have seven fruiting branches. And that's kind of what we did this year is that we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have about seven fruiting branches. I think this tree can handle a bit more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out some of this little growth here. This stuff's pretty weak, we don't need that. I'm gonna cut off the tips here. We're gonna get this thing to branch out this way. Uh, we're gonna cut off the tip here, get this to branch out this way. What I will do over here is I'm gonna leave the tips on over here. And the reason I'm leaving the tips on over here is that I want this particular tree to preserve some of these tips. If we preserve some of these tips, the growth tips I'm talking about, the growth and the fruits from this branch will reach maturity quicker. Whereas if I had cut this off, we're now fruiting, we're now growing from a lateral branch, lower down on the branch. This branch, this bud here is not as vigorous, it's not as healthy, it's not as strong, there's not as much energy here. But in these growth tips up here, this is where most of the energy is stored, at the highest point on the tree. If we can preserve a number of those growth tips, we'll get ourselves earlier fruits, more vigorous and stronger growth, which reaches maturity a lot quicker. So that's really important to consider for someone in maybe a, a shorter season area. I think across the board though, a lot of us are gonna wanna take off the tip, just in general. In that, terms of that light pruning, trying to get as much fruit as possible, no more than three to four inches, and at the very least, take off the tip. This branch over here, I'm not a huge fan of this because if you think about it, this thing's growing towards the center of the tree. It's gonna really uh, shade out the canopy, the interior of the tree. So what I'm gonna do is actually leave the tip on this particular branch, and we're gonna have this thing grow straight up in the air. But on these outside branches here, we're gonna cut these back to a certain height and we're gonna take off, at the bare minimum, just take off the tip. And I'm looking very closely at this tree because you can actually see the Brava. There is a, a number of Brava on this tree and I'm really just gonna take off the tip because there's a Brava all the way down this branch, there's Brava all the way down this branch, and there's Brava all the way down this branch. I'm not seeing any Brava over here. This is the first crop. So I guess this is a really good lesson for those of you guys, maybe people who go for the San Pedro, the Breba crop. This will teach you something about it. And we'll zoom in on this in a second, but up here, I'm gonna to try to preserve as much Breba as possible. I'm gonna put this tree in the greenhouse and we're actually gonna get ourselves a nice head start to this. And we're gonna count, if I count off here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, about 23 Brava we could potentially expect off of this tree. And I'm going to show you guys now what that looks like. So normally what you'll see is on a lot of these branches and a lot of these figs is that if you zoom in on the nodes, and this is going to be difficult, I think, unfortunately, to zoom in with, with this camera. But let me, um, hmm. Let me see if I can get this right for you guys. But you can almost sort of see it up here. 
See this bud up here that's really protruding? That's a brava. This is a brava back here. And you can kind of see, if I get the camera angle right, maybe we, oh, here we go. We had it for a second there, guys. issue is I have to hold the camera, the tripod, and focus the camera at the same time. So, stand, so bear with me here. I want you guys to see this. Perfect. So you can see right up there, that's a Braba. And there's a number of different nodes here. I'll bring you guys around the other side. You can really see to the left of that, that's a new branch. It's very small. It's just as red. See how there's a red coloration there? The one on the left, above my thumb, is a new branch. That's a new branch that could potentially come out next year. On the right is a Braba. This is a fruit that will form the following season. And this forms on last year's growth, the growth right now. So that's how you get a Braba. That's how you know it's a Braba as well. And I'm counting about 23 on this particular tree. That's pretty good. I don't expect 23. I'd be happy with 10. We're going to put this in the greenhouse, this particular tree. And uh, we're going to get a lot of fruits that way very early in the season off of this particular guy. So that's kind of it. That's all I really want to do to this tree. Very, very light pruning. I got it to the right form. And now I don't have to make these big corrections anymore into, these, into cutting these branches big time. We're going to just really just take off the tip at the most taking off three to four inches of growth now i want to do some thinning out on this particular tree because this particular tree is my oldest tree it's about six years old this is a coldenom blanc and i'm going to move this tree so you guys can get a better view of it Lost the microphone here, guys. Sorry about that noise. Let's move this so you guys can see this really well. Okay, perfect. All right, so it's the same thing, right? We have this trunk at the base here, which branches off this way and this way and over here, which forms our main scaffolds. And then from there, we have lots of branching at the top to form a very dense canopy. And those are our fruiting branches. That's our permanence there. And this is all about, at this point, making sure we have the right density. If we have it too dense, we're not going to get that much fruit. If it's not dense at all, we may actually get some sunburn on the wood. Um, it's just not really that great for the tree. So what I'm thinking here... And what I also want to keep an eye out for is any damaged wood because this is getting this tree is getting quite old and there's different points on these trees that exhibit areas that are not that healthy. And this is where a form of rejuvenation pruning comes in. Not that we want to chop this thing all the way down to the base. We may have to a few years from now. You know, that may be our reality because these things can't live forever in pots. However, it's, uh, it's really important, I think, to maintain the health of this tree. We always want to have this new, real healthy growth that comes out. This is really old wood that's not that productive. It's not that healthy. As the wood gets older, we just have a lot of problems with these branches. There's maybe some you know, damage underneath the bark that's damaged at the cambium that we can't see. There's areas of just pro, you know very low productivity. So I think it's important to see with these new branches here that came out in the spring of this year, where these problem areas might be. And so far I'm seeing a little bit of weakness on this branch. I'm seeing a little bit of weakness over here. So what I may want to do is if I'm really tempted to, I can cut this whole thing out and start over from a lower point and get myself a healthier branch. And that just may be the case of what you guys may want to do. 
I do want to thin this out a bit because we do have a pretty dense canopy here. So what I'm going to do is actually come in here. And All right, everyone. So the camera went out for a second. We lost uh, some battery, but we made this cut up here and we thin this tree out. We have the right hormonal balance that way. We're not pruning out too much on every branch. We're not heading back every branch. We're thinning the branches out. I think that's a better way to do it if you have to. What we did off camera is that we took this entire branch system out. This whole thing here is kind of protruding in the wrong direction. I didn't like this particular branch. Um, so we're going to take this whole system out. And this is again a form of that rejuvenation. This whole branch here is going to take over and get ourselves a nice canopy in this particular direction. What I want to do is make sure there's no tip and there isn't. So that way this branch will branch out in the right direction. We have one growing out this way and one growing out towards me. This will become a new system of healthy branches here. And that's mostly it. What we did discover as well is that we had some dead wood up here and we actually had an ant that was boring into the wood, but um, that's not actually their main function. It wasn't a borer, so it was an ant. And that's kind of what happens with these trees and why we need to watch out for them is that we need to make sure that there's no entry points. And if there is, we're sealing them off. Uh, you don't have to use a sealant, but you need to make sure that we're pruning, we're making good pruning cuts because at a certain point, our tree will not protect certain wood, will not give nutrients and keep particular points on the tree alive um, if there's no bud above it. So you can see kind of on this section right here, this particular section's dead because everything above that, there's no node. So the tree just kind of rejects that. And this then becomes an entry point for bugs and insects and borers and all kinds of different things. But that's pretty much the structure of the tree now. I mean, I've got the right form. Everything looks good to me. I don't think I'm going to thin this out anymore. What I could do is come in here and thin this little stuff out over here because this is not really going to do anything for me. And then what I'm going to focus on now is just taking off the growth tips, getting this to branch out and getting out, getting it to branch out where we want. We're going to cut this down here because I like this bud more than I like those buds up above it. This thing's already sort of branching out. And I think what I'm going to do is actually preserve one of these tips. We'll preserve that one. Come back over on this side of the tree. This has a nice point of growth here. I like this, but I want it to branch out. So we're going to get this thing to branch out a bit uh, by taking off that tip. Same thing over here. We're going to take off that growth tip. We'll leave this one on here. This up here, I like this, but down here, maybe we should keep this. Maybe we shouldn't. I'm not sure. I'll have to think about that. But up in here, this is good. I like this is already branched out pretty well. We'll leave it, let it do its thing. This thing up here, we'll cut this off. Just the tip. And uh, let's see here with this particular branch. I think we'll leave it. So that's really the form here, guys. That's really all it was. Not a whole lot. This is a finished, pretty much a finished structure to it. It is leaning a bit more this way. So I try to take off some growth here and we'll try to get this side of the tree to really finish out that form. But you know, it's not really all about that. Symmetry is nice, but mostly for the eye. Um, we'll do some other trees if you guys want very quickly here. All right, uh, let's see here. We'll do this particular tree. This is a Coldenom Roja. You can see how vigorous it is. Look how much growth is all the way up there. We have our main, main trunk down here. We have our scaffolds. Now we just need this to branch out at a certain height that we want. I don't like this branch. It was very thin and straggly and it was damaged by the sun all year, unfortunately. Spin around there. And you know what? I don't really mind the fact that this is so lanky. Um, but what I would like to do is actually get this to branch out. And it's very difficult because we have a very wide node spacing here. So what I'm going to do actually is not really touch this. 
if that is a that sounds a bit crazy maybe but all up in this top the port top portion of the tree is where it starts to branch out and you can see up here we're going to get a larger canopy that rounded canopy that we want it's a shame though that all throughout this section of the tree it grew too vigorously it didn't branch out how we wanted it um, and that's kind of maybe just a feature of this particular variety um, you know some trees just won't agree with you here we have a Moscatel Preto. We're not going to thin this one out except for this little branch down here. It's kind of unnecessary. And also this branch down here, which is a bit unnecessary. I like the form. I like how this is going. We're taking off the tips. And that is mostly it across this variety. That's all I'm going to do. We have some Braba up there. We'll leave this on, um, and we'll leave that on. We won't even touch that. Let's show you guys some more trees here. Let me bring you guys around. Now, sometimes your trees don't always do what you want them to do, unfortunately. We can see this guy right here. This is my Smith. We chopped it back quite a bit. Uh, we took off four air layers off of this tree. One here, one here, one here, and then one, um, I think, back on this side of the branch. And it put out a lot of growth. It responded with very vigorous growth and almost no fruits. The vigor kind of slowed down up here, and we got ourselves some branching, and we got ourselves some fruit. But it's a bit of a shame, but the, the form is now back. We have some rejuvenation. We got some nice vigor out of this. Now we just need to make sure that this thing is going to do well. We're going to take off all these tips. And that's all that is. It's really all it is. We'll probably preserve, we'll preserve one or two of these tips. I don't really like this branch down here. We're going to take this out. And uh, that's it. You can see that final form there. Um... So I hope you guys got something out of this, you know, I really do. Um, there's so many different techniques and forms of pruning. And I think, I do, I do believe I gave you guys some of the best techniques that you can use for potted figs, for trees that are in ground in warmer places. We're growing them as a tree form. We're getting them to this shape. In the beginning, we're gonna come in here, start them as cuttings. We're gonna cut them back to a certain height, get ourselves a really nice and healthy trunk we get ourselves a nice healthy trunk, we let it branch out into these scaffolds. From there we form our fruiting branches, which we then recycle every single year. We don't prune the tree too hard for production. We just take off those tips or three to four inches of growth. Thank you guys here for watching this one. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe. Check out our, uh, our website, our blog, figboss.com. We have all kinds of information over there. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and also subscribe to the channel. Share this video with you know, you know somebody who is struggling with pruning, share this with them. It's so comprehensive. It was a long one, but uh, so much information that I think needs to get out there to people because there's, there really is just too many videos now on pruning fig trees that is just mostly inaccurate. Um, and a lot of it is taken from my own videos. So um, yeah. We'll talk to you guys soon, and uh, we'll see you for tomorrow's video, all right? Take care, everyone.